All right, how's it going? This is Steve, the Edit Eye Chef. I am here to show you a recipe that we are showing you in one of our episodes, but you won't find it in the episode. We're just throwing it at you. So I'm going to do this little sidebar here so you can kind of see what we're doing uh, and how we actually made this. What we're going to do real quick is we're going to do a black bean and chorizo hot side dish to go along with the sandwich in the episode one, actually. You have to start somewhere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this rolling and I'm gonna show you how to put all the components together. So what we're gonna start with is, we're gonna get our little burner going here. And I'm gonna start with a seasoned olive oil. And all I did here is I threw a little bit of garlic and, um, and some dry basil and olive oil. It's extra virgin olive oil. So we're gonna get this in the pan. I'm gonna get this going, get this good and hot. And we're gonna saute up some onions in here. And I've got some nice red onion. As you can see, you want me to tip that for you a little bit so you can get a better look at it. And it's just some, some fresh basil, some garlic, some cracked black pepper. But we're going to season it up a little bit more. I just wanted to kind of give that oil a little bit of uh, aromatic, so we're going to get some flavor into that oil. So when we saute our onions, we're going to... Actually, we're going to give it just another second to go. But now, let's talk a little bit about this side. We have uh, black beans already cooked ahead, so that way that we can kind of bring it all together real quick. I've got some chorizo that we're going to saute, get some of those oils out of it, and get that to enhance the dish a little bit. In the measuring cup here, I have a little bit of chicken stock, and what we're going to do with that is that's just to kind of bring a little bit, you know, bring a little bit of a looseness to the dish because what happens is the beans are so starchy they're going to tighten that up. So we're going to get now we can hear the action going on in there. We're going to get these onions sautéed a little bit. And we want to get these to translucency. Translucency is a little different than transparency. Translucent means just to kind of soften them up a little bit, but you can't quite see through them yet. So we're going to get these going, and, and we're really rolling now, so that's good. Love these anodized pans because they really get the heat through quickly. All right, chorizo's going in. Like I said, we're going to render this and bring a little bit of that fat flavor out, and the chorizo has a nice flavor to it, so that's also going to add off. Oh, the smells are out of control. So we're going to, we're going to render this get that oil a whole ton of love and while this is going we're gonna throw our spices in and I've got just about a half a teaspoon of dried chipotle powder and that's that's where the heat's at that's the only amount of heat I'm putting in here then I've got uh, I've got some cumin and again that's probably about uh, about a teaspoon and a half of cumin going in there this is a uh, this is the uh, 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 Sazon, which is a uh, Goya product, and it's a seasoning you can buy at any grocery store. And I also have about a half a teaspoon of dried oregano right in there with it. And the Sazon is a, is a very good product. They get turned on by my chef at my day job, Pablo. Uh, we did a Latin buffet, and he actually turned me on to that spice, and I never knew. Oh, if you could only smell that right now. Then we're gonna put some of these dry, uh, these uh, banana peppers in there. We're gonna jazz that up and there's not really a whole lot of heat in these. We're looking really more for the flavor. And some fresh cilantro, and that's probably about, uh, about a tablespoon, maybe a little more than a tablespoon, but you can go as much as you want on that because uh, there's nothing better than, than fresh herbs. So. Uh, and one thing to remember when you're using fresh versus dry is you always wanna use about twice as much fresh as you do dry because uh, the, uh, the dried stuff has a more concentrated flavor and the fresh stuff is gonna give you more of that gardening taste, so you wanna get the robustness out of it by going. Now we'll go right in with the black beans. And as you can see, once we get in there, it's gonna draw all that fluid right in. Oh, listen to that. Listen to the love that's going on in that pan right there. So this is what we got here. We've got the black beans with the, with the sausage, the onions, and the peppers with all that seasoning in there. If you could only smell it now. And then the last ingredient, well, other than the chicken stock to thin it out, the last ingredient we're going to put in there is my own personal homemade spice blend. And it's a lot of restaurants, a lot of chefs have tri-mix. It's sort of a tri-mix. It's a salt, pepper, garlic ratio. And I'm putting that in there just to kind of bring the rest of those flavors out. And, and in here also I have a little bit of a Creole seasoning. You can find a convenience Creole seasoning on the shelf too. But uh, when you're making your own homemade tri-mix, one thing to remember, uh, the, the great equation to that is nine parts salt, one part garlic, one part cracked pepper. And, uh, and I know that's kind of a little tricky, but if you picture like a teaspoon in your hand, nine teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of garlic, one teaspoon of pepper, you get the perfect balance every time. And then you can throw it in like Emerald's uh, BAM, you know, that essence that he's got there. 
Uh, you can throw any of your favorite seasonings in there. Some people like to put a little uh, cilantro in there. Or some people like to put uh, different, all different stuff in there. White pepper instead of black. I mean, you can really kind of mix it up. I've got that Creole in there too because that gives it that nice southern flavor. And there's a lot of other spices, blends in that that can add like paprika, things like that. So this looks like it's pretty good. I'm going to add maybe just a little bit of chicken stock to it. And then what you could do is once you have, you've got those beans cooked separate with that starchy liquid in there too, what you could do now is you could let this simmer for probably, you know, about 20 minutes or so and bring it down. Or, or you could even make it like a chili and just keep adding chicken stock to it, let it cook down. Keep it, it's only going to get better as it cooks. So that's pretty much it. And we're going to let it cook for just a little bit. But uh, if you want, you can look for the recipe over here. If you click on the link, you'll see the recipe in full, and you can, it'll walk you through step by step. But I want to thank you for checking this out, and we will see you next time. Don't forget to click on the episodes and check us out. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.